Hi there. I know I smell bad. Good morning here on day nine. It was a cold one last night. It's probably the coldest yet. The forecasted was high 30s before. And we're kind of higher up. But I can tell you for a fact that a 50 degree bag does not keep you comfortable in high 30s temperatures. Uh, even with one of these thermal rest reactor liners that supposedly adds 10 degrees or so. Um, it was a cold one. Yeah, anyway, I'm using the same 50 degree synthetic bag from Enlightened Equipment. The lens is actually fogging up because <laughs> we made coffee in here. Condensation is building up. But I'm using the same 50 degree revelation I got during the Appalachian Trail through hike. And it's a synthetic and it's just a super thin, like, like, it's barely noticeable. Sometimes I wonder if there's any insulation in here at all. I feel this, you know, what do you think? It's nothing? Yeah, it's like nothing uh, compared to like a 20 degree, much thicker. And um, I mean, I think it'll keep you alive in 50 degrees, which is the rating that's, you know, the rating is for survival, not for comfort. But around 60, I guess it'd be comfortable. But without the liner, I think I'd have, <laughs> I'd have definitely woken Tina up last night or something i don't know but it was a cold one it was a very cold one so if you're ever going to do the kungsladen i would not recommend a 50 degree bag i would recommend something a little warmer the reason i am carrying this is because we are doing the camino to santiago after this trail and i don't want to carry a 20 degree bag and her also like something like that um on that so i was gonna carry this that's why we have two liners because then we can get away to get rid of the liners but uh cold one last night oh yeah I wouldn't recommend shorts either in mid-August. <laughs> mid-August, no, don't recommend shorts or 50 degree bag. Can I add a recommendation? Yeah. I would recommend you to bring your puffy and not save the weight. Yeah, I didn't bring my puffy either to save the weight and uh, another unnecessary item. I got my melly though. Um, yeah, I didn't wear my long sleeve shirt because it stinks because we've been sweating in it for eight days and without washing it yet. So three, Two and a half more days and we get to do laundry so looking forward to that today's socks will be socks i've been wearing over the last week just rinsed them in a creek yesterday so i got all the dirt off there was a lot of mud in between the toes that caked in but that wouldn't have been good to wear but now it's clean enough to wear so i have two pseudo clean socks i have one waterproof sock i'm not wearing today i alternate Maybe every two days I'll wear a waterproof sock as a treat. And I have one clean sock in here that's nice and soft. I don't know when I'd rather wear that. When do I deserve to wear a nice clean sock? I don't know, we'll figure it out. Dirty sock for me today though. Tina, what kind of socks are you wearing today? Not those. Not those? Those are your sleeping socks, right? Those are the sleeping socks. I think I'll also go with the river wash ones yesterday. River wash ones, yeah. Because the wet dry socks are still pretty wet. Yeah. And, and the, the shoes are very are wet. And even if everything was dry, it would get wet. It would get wet anyway. So I'm kind of saving the good dry socks. Oh yeah, it's totally saving it. Yeah, no matter what you do, you're going to get wet feet as soon as you head out. And this next section is supposed to be pretty boggy. So we're dirty socks and then we're another cleaned dirty sock later. Right now it's 7.07. .07. We are on trail. We have a nine o'clock appointment with a boat to get us past a uh, quite a significant gap. And you have to call ahead for these, so you have to set a time. But it's for nine o'clock, it's three miles away. So we have just under two hours to make three miles easy. But of course you wanna get to those way before your time. So we're gonna get there quite early, filter some water and eat more. And uh, Watch the sun hit the water. It's a beautiful morning. We should have a nice open area coming up and then we're gonna go down towards the water. We're still working on our climb, but this is a lake that kind of, you can get to Jakvik from there by boat. Some people do that, but we must've paddled somewhere over there somewhere and then hiked along the shore 
and then hiked up somewhere. I don't know, I can't tell, but it's a beautiful morning. You can see the mountains all around and there's still snow in those mountains as well. Beautiful morning, look at those mountains to the right. And we still have a bit of a climb, so we'll get some good views in a little bit. It's maybe 7.30 and the sun is only that high and it rises at 4.20 or 4.30 so it's in three hours. That's because it goes slowly across the sky as it goes up. It rises in the northeast. Takes a long time but by this time it gets nice and strong so we took off our jackets and uh, we're just walking casually along. We'll be there in plenty of time so no worries. Curious who others will be there but I'm guessing some people camp there and then we'll see them there when we get there but beautiful open area again. Ran into a little tree on the way here, got a little scratched up, and uh, fixed that up though. Getting ready for the boat ride here, here at the lake. And that's what's left over. <laughs> it was dripping blood, but I should be fine now. All the boats around the north side of the lake yesterday. <laughs> Back behind us is the house where we just paid for the boat ride. It was a really nice boat ride actually and smooth, comfortable, <laughs> kind of cold. There was no wind so it was not choppy at all. It was really nice. Now we're heading back to the trail. It's up here somewhere and then we start a gradual climb, super gradual. It's kind of flat and then we start a big climb and then we'll go down a little and that's it for today. So how, my, how many miles do you think? All together, we did three in the morning, so we'll try to do another like 14 or so. We'll see, we'll see. Another muddy section. From watching a couple of other vlogs before starting on this trail, I thought the Kungsleden would be mostly like wide open, um, maybe almost all, but I can tell you, you walk through the woods quite a bit. And some of these bushes, the branches are quite stiff, so watch out but we should get in and out of the open soon here but it's, it's quite an adventure on this trail raging river a whole bunch of fishermen walked up behind us and then they went to a lake kind of down further but the whole lake's flowing really well because of this i guess it's fishing season right now uh, as soon as crossing over my turn to go and i gotta say lots of bridges on the kungsleden Pretty nice, otherwise, I mean, can't cross that. Check this out, it's a gigantic ant nest. It's gotta be at least like two feet high. We walked by one earlier, it was active. This one, yeah, you see some ants running around the top, but it's huge. 
I was just thinking that our grizzly friend back in Canada would love to just dig this up and eat all the larvae in there. Millions of them probably. At the IC in Yakbik, I bought this bread. I don't know what it is, but I bought it. It was really big and I squished it down. That's what you do is you buy bread and you squish it down so it packs smaller. But it's pretty delicious bread. I'm actually be disappointed I probably won't see this for a while. I tried to translate some of this, but all I can tell is like polar bread. It's reindeer. And it has something to do with polar metodin. Here's a snowflake from Sweden. Jubileum? How do you call it? Anniversary? Anniversary something. I don't know. Jillen Gradock something. I don't know. But it tastes delicious. So if you're doing a cook slide and you see this, I say give it a shot. It is heavy, but uh, it's delicious. Packs down small and you can just eat it with no sauce or anything. Probably a lot of calories. I'm not sure. We came up to the sign and, and Tina's like, oh, and I was looking at it going, it looks like a camping symbol on the top right and it says pole circle and I was like what's that some campground but she clarified it's the arctic circle polar circle so we are this is my first time I've been heading above the arctic circle pretty crazy is it let's see how it feels yeah Feels like we're walking through a bunch of trees and mud. We just filtered some water from a river just before the climb. Now we cross this field and we go straight up. But fortunately, we don't go up and over that guy. We go to the side. So we'll be going up and over. It's, it's way more than you than it looks. It's like 1,100 feet higher than where we are. But we're gonna have a lot of up and down, so it's gonna be figure like 13, 1400 feet of climb. But we're gonna go out there and kind of just head north along the side. But that looks more daunting, doesn't it? It's a big one. There's that mountain in front of us. But of course I was wrong. We're going to the left of this mountain. But I swear at some point or another there's a huge mountain on our left side. And we'll be walking like a plateau just to the east of it. Probably like five miles from now. We just can't see it. Looking behind us, it's nice. There's a big old lake there. And another lake, there's just a whole bunch of lakes that we walked through. So we walked through all that. Probably went in back there. Beautiful open area. Tiny little like birch trees here and there. And a big old mountain next to us. We're gonna start looking for reindeer again. We haven't seen them since this morning. So yeah. In our practice searching for campsites um, in fields like this, here's a bit of advice. We've learned that those sage-like bushes, those like lighter green colored, they generally like wetter areas. So it's usually bog or water filled. So you don't wanna even consider trying to camp there or trying to cross it because you'll probably get your feet wet. And there are like bog grasses. I don't see any here, but those of course would be like marsh. So you won't be able to find campsites there. What we found nice was really old dry mo like moss and lichen fields. Generally it seems to stop other plants from growing and it's relatively soft like right down here that kind of thing relatively soft. So I mentioned we hiked over there and through all those lakes. That could be the big lake that we got a boat across, but uh, yeah, actually that could be the island that we went around as well. But we hiked all through these lakes and we were wondering like, how is it getting so much water? The river 
was just flowing so hard and there's just all these lakes here there's a higher one there's just a ton of lakes here but as i as we go higher we notice there's this huge lake area here and you notice all the mountains and over there there's some snow probably glaciers there's actually a bunch of mountains of snow up there i guess that's all kind of feeding it and it's just so much water i just don't understand how that much water can come down these mountains and still be up there melting it's just insane so much water it's pretty cool These guys surprised me. I was walking looking towards the right because that's where we're going and all of a sudden these two guys were right next to me. Both of them are great specimens. Look at those antlers. Look my way! They're looking at Tina. Yeah look at me. I'm more threatening. Arr! Oh. Uh oh. I'm not more threatening at all. There they go though. I love how they keep their head up real high as they walk. Such proud animals, aren't they? Alright, see you guys later. Oh, they're really close. Oh crap, I should stop looking at the camera and just look see it. Look at them because uh they were right next to me. Hi there. Hi there. I know I smell bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're downwind of me now. Now you're like, oh gosh, what did I get myself into? Oh man, he's like 10 meters away. The sun's going down today here, another day on the Kungsleden. We camped out here, it's a lot less windy today. I just got amazing views of the lakes and the mountains below. We're actually in the shade now, we were in the sun for quite a while, but just beautiful. It's amazing how many lakes there are and how big they all are. I'm heading inside though, we're gonna call it. We already ate and everything, so we're gonna go to sleep. So thanks for watching everyone. Y'all take care. Y'all have a good night and see you tomorrow. We're just gonna be another day tomorrow, about 16 mile-ish maybe. And then the day after that, we're going to a place called Quick Yuk, something like that. <laughs> All right, thanks, bye.